are so glad you're with us this morning. If you are watching online, we are so glad that you have joined us. If you are physically able, would you stand all across this place as we worship this morning? Click it off, dude. Okay, y'all get y'all gotta help us out this morning and clap. I cannot hear this this morning, so uh, we gonna need your help. So click that and come right in with those the drums, all right, bro. All right. Forgiveness. There we go. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of the symphony on my. Like holy water on my Like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of a symphony to my ears, like holy water. Holy 
Good morning. Wasn't that awesome? That's a good way to start out the day. Hey, good morning. We are so glad you guys are here this morning. If you are a regular attender or if it's your very first time, we're just really glad you're here with us. If you haven't got your Compass t-shirt, stop out in the lobby. We'd love to give you one after service, so just stop out there and grab one. Also, when the um, offering bag comes by, make sure you're filling out your connection card, drop it in there, or you can fill it out online with the QR symbol um, that's provided on the screen. And if you didn't get one when you came in, raise your hand and Usher will get one to you. Also, if you'd like to receive our e-newsletter, please make sure you're letting somebody know, mark that on the back of your card, or stop out in the lobby, sign up so that you can get that e-newsletter. Um, it's just got a lot of great information in the life of our church. If you want to get the app downloaded, scan the QR code on the screen or stop out in the lobby. Somebody will help you get that all downloaded to your phone. Also, the monthly calendar, a fan favorite. Um, out inside the office, there's an April calendar of events. Um, stop out that and get that copy so you can put it on your refrigerator, your dashboard, your whatever, you, however you want to keep track of that thing. Let you know what's happening every single day here. Um, student ministry for Selma and Winchester tonight from 6 to 8. Um, we're going to continue the spiritual gift series. Where we're going to look at spiritual gifts assessments, results that, came, that you did last week. So make sure you join. And at Yorktown tonight from 6 to 8 for youth, I'm going to learn about grace and forgiveness, two foundational topics to the Christian faith. So that ought to be amazing. And then for, um, also for student ministry, church camp 2024. If you have never gone to church camp, this is your year. If you haven't been, uh, if you have been, you can't wait to go back. Get signed up. Junior high, church camp, and senior high will be June 17th to the 21st at Shiloh Park in Marion. Not very far away. It's open to any incoming sixth grader through graduating seniors. So quite a quite an age range there. Early bird sign up before May the 5th is 200. After May the 5th, it'll cost you 240. So make sure you get signed up early and save those dollars. And there are scholarships available as needed. Stop in the lobby and um, get some more information, and there's a QR code to get yourself signed up. And all campus, Pastor Adam, thank you, Pastor Adam, will be leading an in-depth Bible study of the book of Hebrews on Thursdays, beginning actually this Thursday at 6.30 at our Winchester campus. It's going to run for seven weeks. It's open to everybody. You don't have to go to Winchester to go. It's open to everybody. So sign up online today so they kind of know how many are coming. Um, night of worship in a couple weeks at our Selma campus on Friday night the 26th from 6.30 to 8 right here. We're going to spend time in the presence of God and go deeper together on our night of worship. For women's ministry, if you've ever wanted to do a DIY woodcrafting project, who cannot say that? This is going to be a great night to uh, join with other women. Now's your chance to sign up. Um, it'll be all three campuses. We're going to go to the Pulp and Pine in Anderson. That'll be on Thursday the 9th from 6.30 to 8. You do need to sign up in advance, pay for your item. Um, you need to do that by May the 2nd for your project to be ready when you get there. You can't just, it's not really great if you just show up and hope for a project. Um, World Vision Water Walk um, 24, we'd love to have you join us for the East Central Indiana Global 6K on Sunday, May the 19th at 3 o'clock at the American, I'm sorry, Academy of Model Aeronautics um, out on Memorial Drive. Sign up using the QR code on the screen or by using the link um, on our Facebook page. And you can also stop out there and grab a flyer in the lobby today. And last but not least, save the date for VBS 2024. Um, our theme this year is scuba. It takes kids deep into an amazing undersea adventure where they're going to experience the ever-flowing, never-ending love of God. At scuba, VBS, kids will be immersed in the word and discover what living water is really all about. Watch for a list of serving opportunities, and we'll be praying about serving one another at each of the campuses. So we're going to have this three different times at Winchester, June the 10th through the 13th, it's going to be in the evening from 6 to 8. At Selma, it's going to be in the morning, June 24th to 27th from 9 to 11.30. And at Yorktown, it's going to be in the evening, June 24th to 27th, 6 to 8.30 p.m. Lots of opportunity to get your kids into VBS, grandkids, nieces, nephews, get them signed up. Glad to see everybody this morning. Stand up, greet one another.
There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. If you can't see him, he's so cute. You just dance, little fella, and worship Jesus. But you know, that's truly what God wants us to do, is just to have the heart of a child and just worship him. It don't matter what we look like. It don't matter what anybody else thinks. We're just going to worship Worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords because he is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. So in these next few moments, can we, can we just worship him with our whole heart? Worship him with everything that we have. Worship him with everything that we are. And maybe for you that means you lift your hands. Maybe for you that means you just stand quietly reverently before the Lord whatever that looks like for you I don't want you to worry about what anybody else thinks we're just going to worship worship the Father because that's what we're here to do church we're not here to check this off our box for the week we are here to meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and encounter him when we leave this building this morning we should be different than we came in so we're here to meet with the King of kings and Lord of lords. So Holy Spirit, you are in this place. And we invite you into the space of our minds. We invite you into the space of our hearts, God. And we engage your presence in this place. We engage your presence in this place. And worthy of every song we could ever sing. 
worthy of all the praise we could ever
we build our life upon a firm foundation God you are our rock God you are everything that we need God we can look a lot of places and we can try and fulfill our heart with a lot of things but God nothing will satisfy but you everything else will leave us empty so God we look to you we look to you. We look to your presence. We look to your Holy Spirit. We look to you for everything that we need. His word says to fix your eyes upon him. And everything else will be taken care of. We just look to him. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to figure it out. We don't have to fix it. We just look to him. That's it. He's got it. So God, we fix our eyes on you today. May you be our firm foundation, God, that we stand on. God, as our, our ushers come forward this morning, as we just continue in worship and take up our tithes and our offerings. God, we just say thank you. We say thank you for the ways that you have blessed us, God. We thank you for the, we thank you for all that we have. You are so good and you are a faithful father. God, we thank you. And God, today we just take what is given. And Father God, just as you did, we bless it. And God, we pray that you would just multiply it, God, to do what can't be done in the natural. God, to go further than we think it will go. God, to go further than it looks like it will go because, God, this is yours. This is yours. And so, God, we ask you to do the impossible. And God, may you continue just to find us faithful and good stewards of our time, of our resources, of all that you have entrusted to us, God to reach outside of these walls. God, we just thank you. You are so good to us. You are such a good father. And we thank you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. He's so good. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim your name. This is a house of hearts are full of praise. You have our full attention. You have the
to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of house of miracles. Amen. Amen. It's a house of miracles. Oh, can we just declare that in this place this morning? He's alive and well, church. He is still healing. He is still moving. He is still speaking. He is alive. So this morning, if you have, if you have a need, if you feel comfortable, I want you just to lift your hand where you are. And we're just going to pray for you. You don't have to tell them what it is. God knows the need. But we're just going to pray for you. There are some hands lifted. So if you see somebody around you today who needs prayer, if you feel comfortable, would you just go around those with a hand lifted? And we're just going to pray for them this morning. Yeah, if you're a person of prayer, would you just move all across this place? There's still someone right there in the middle. There's somebody in the back that needs some, some prayer. Come on, guys. Don't be afraid to move. You don't, you don't have to say the perfect prayer. You just ask God to do what he knows to do. Just lay your hand on his shoulder. You don't have to be afraid. There's still somebody in the back. I want to make sure everybody's got somebody to pray for. God, we just thank you so much. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place, for your presence in this place. God, we just thank you. God, when we are in your presence, God, things happen, things change. You are our healer, you are our defender, you are our provider. God, you are so good. 
And you are so faithful to your children. So, God, whatever the needs are in this place right now, Father God, we just lift it to you. God, we speak healing where there needs to be healing. Father God, we just speak provision where there needs to be provision. Father God, we just speak the mighty name of Jesus over circumstances that look bigger than themselves, Father God. But we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask, think, or imagine, Father God. You are able. So God, and not in our might, but in yours, Father God, we ask for you to move. God, we ask for your hand upon these. God, we just thank you. You are so good. You are so good. You are faithful. We thank you, Father, for your healing. God, we thank you for your provision. God, we thank you for your hand moving mightily in these circumstances, God. We just thank you. Thank you, Father God. You are able to do. You are able to do the impossible. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm a, I am. I am. Sorry. You, but you, you don't have to keep strumming, but thank you. Because <laughs> you might be there a while if that's the case. Hey, um, I don't know. Uh, April kind of hit on it a bit, but this morning, um, do you ever feel like you're on assignment for something? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Ever feel like your job is sometimes your assignment? Yeah? You ever feel like uh, the Holy Spirit gives you an assignment to come to? Oh, come on now. We had three people say that the Holy Spirit gives them assignment. I believe that we all have an assignment that we get, and so today I feel like I am on assignment. And the crazy thing is, sometimes I feel like what I read is for myself, but it's not. It is for others. And I feel like today this is for someone else. So I, yesterday morning I was reading uh, a devotional. I've been reading this devotional about being in the wilderness. Anybody feel like you're in the wilderness? Yeah. Um, and so in this, it says, like students, we have to remember what God said and done to get us through this test. In our minds, we must build memorials to his miracles. But instead, listen to this. This is so good. And I want, you to, I want to break this off of you with the partnership of the Holy Spirit this morning. Instead, a lot of us do this. We build monuments to our mistakes. That's powerful. Because a lot of times we look at ourselves and we put our identity in our mistakes. Well, you don't know what I, what I did, right? You see what's happening here is we put our, we put our identity in our mistake and then Then a lot of times we get real comfortable just sitting right there in our mistakes. And we're like, no, you go ahead and you go go do what you're going to do. I'm going to sit right here because I'm comfortable here. This is my seat. This is where I sit every Sunday. I'm not moving. All y'all are laughing because that's where you normally sit on Sundays, right? I grew up in a church where uh, if you sat at a seat where there was a pillow, you were in trouble because that's where an old lady sat. And that was her seat every Sunday, right? So the reason I wanted to say that is because I, I want to encourage you this morning of the wilderness is not always going to be there. You understand that Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. How long were the Israelites in the wilderness? How long? Yeah, you think the 40 is, is coincidence? No. No, day 41 happened, right? Day 41 happened, and I want to encourage you that the wilderness is not always going to be there for you because sometimes it feels like the wilderness is an eternity when in reality it's just a few days. Amen? That wasn't part of my sermon. You got that for free. So um, I don't know if Pastor Jason shared with you last week, but... um, I had a couple come to me uh, a few weeks, uh, not a few weeks, but actually probably about four months ago and say, why do we come to church? Why do we do church? And I was like, I don't know. Why do we do church? Why do we go to church? And so I was like, they said, can we do a sermon series on that? Well, the really cool part is we had a little bit of an opening where we could make that happen. And so last week, does anybody remember what we talked about? 
Y'all are fired. We are the church. He told me that he preached the same sermon that I preached, but that is not the same sermon. Did he preach the same sermon I preached? Okay. But last week we talked about connection to... (sighs) He's fired. (laughs) The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Did you know that in Scripture there is no place in Scripture that actually says the Trinity? And the reason, I believe the reason that is, this isn't, this is Adam's in, uh, thought process, but I believe is because we want to speak Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How, do, how was Jesus even baptized? He was baptized by John the Baptist, but what was said in that? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? So this week we're going to talk about our connection to our community, community of, of believers, Right? Do you guys love coming to church on Sunday? Getting to talk to your friends that you're, this isn't social hour, by the way. Did you know that? A lot of us look at it that way. But over the last few weeks, we've seen our communities come together in this amazing way, amen? It's been really cool about how our communities have come together. I, I guess one thing I forgot to do, um, there's a lot of new faces here. My name is Pastor Adam. I am the pastor of the Winchester campus. If you don't know that, that that's who I am. Uh, you're probably like, who's this random guy in shorts on my stage, Right? Well, it's summer, it's getting to be springtime and summertime, and so I love wearing shorts. But anyway, out of that, we've seen our communities just amazingly come together, and it's been really cool to watch. Yeah? And I want you to know that, like, even though there's devastation, there's destruction, there's this insurmountable hill that maybe look like, looks like we can't climb, God always has a plan. Amen? And His timing is always perfect. Amen? We may not know it, we may not understand it, and sometimes we get frustrated. (laughs) I didn't have to say amen that time. But here's the really cool part, is we have the opportunity to see the outcome, and that's really cool. Anybody grow up in church, uh, like most of us probably did, grew up in church, and you went to church on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday night, and then if you're in revival, all week, and sometimes two weeks. I think I remember, my brother can help me, there's been times we've been in revival for like three weeks, right? Anybody ever been there? And you're like, oh gosh, man, I just want to go to sleep, can we just be done? And you know the really cool part about that, like as a kid, I thought it was absolutely a struggle. As an adult, I'd be like, bring it on. Let's go. Let's do church. Y'all remember this Asbury? Nobody's talking about Asbury anymore, right? The, the revival at Asbury, nobody's talking about that anymore because it's done. It's over with, right? But can you imagine being in those times like where all we do is worship the Father? As an adult, I'd be like, dude, I don't care what else is going on around me. I really don't. I want to be in worship with the Father. So, and what's really crazy for myself is um, over those, the course of the last maybe three to four weeks, what it's really felt like is it, it has literally felt like I've been in church or at church for the last, like, month. That's what it really feels like. Because of seeing community come together, right? You guys agree? Like, and the crazy thing is there's no such thing as coincidence. There's no reason. Remember what I said? God's timing is perfect, perfect, and he has a plan in all things. Amen? What what happened the week week after the tornado hit? You saw things just taking place, right? Right? You saw people moving and doing and just being present. Lots of us were being connected to our communities in ways that we would never imagine. I've got to tell a story that um, you guys remember a guy by the name of Todd Austin, right? Todd Austin was like my spiritual dad, and um, he was, uh, there was a guy that we met with and that we had learned about through camp, camp, and so this guy spoke over me, and and one time I was like, I had no idea what that, what his prophecy meant. You ever had anybody prophesy over you, speak into you, speak life over you, speak things over you? Well, this guy spoke this prophecy over me, and we were sitting in Fuji, of all places, and he speaks to me, and he says, you will be used in a way that will help local and state 
government agencies. Listen, this prophecy, this guy spoke over me, it was over 10 years ago. Well over 10 years ago. And at that time, I thought, you're full of it, bro. Like, uh-uh, there ain't no way, because I can't stand politics and I can't stand politicians. So, I was like, I don't know, I don't know how that's going to happen. You know what happened the week that, um, after the tornado hit? I was standing at the town hall in Winchester, Indiana. I was standing with a guy who was uh, a candidate for the governor of Indiana. I was standing with the mayor of Winchester. I was standing with the uh, assistant police chief, a deputy police chief of the city of Winchester. And as I was standing there talking to these guys, my eyes started tearing up, and I probably looked really weird. But the Holy Spirit revealed to me, you remember that conversation you had back at Fuji? I was like, oh, that's it. This is it. This is that moment where God is saying you're going to be used in these places. You know, a lot of times we brush off things in our lives, right? We brush off things that have been said over us, but a lot of times the Holy Spirit then reveals them to us. What's happened in my life as I've sat and prepared for many, many sermons over the course of the last 14, 15 years? And I feel like we're in a time where God is teaching us and preparing us for battle. And the other place I feel like that's happening is he is wanting us to come back to him. Amen? He's wanting us to turn our eyes. April said it this morning. Fix our eyes. A lot of, a lot, fix our gaze upon the Father. Because a lot of times what happens is we, when, when we get hurt or when something happens in our lives, what do we do? Turn around and run the other way. You know where he's at? And we say, where's God in all this? Where's God in all this? Where's God in all this? And what it really is, is that we have turned our back on him. I can't help but reminded of a song, and I, I love songs. Um, I love, I love uh, singing, man. We grew up singing, grew up in uh, a lot of different things. But one of the songs that, um, you guys ever heard the song, Take Me Back? I Want to Go Back. It's by Cochran and Company. I want to read you some of the lyrics that uh, we're going, uh, we're, we're actually going to be singing this song here in, in just a bit, but I want to sing, I want I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I want to read some of the lyrics uh, in this song, and I told, I told the worship team before, I said, it's going to be really hard not to sing, uh, because I love to sing. Um, but uh, in this song, I want you to just hear the lyrics and think of what they mean. There was a time that I swore I would never go back. Ever been hurt by a church? That's not in the lyrics. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running. I was searching. But every place I turned for healing left me more broken than the last. I tried to walk on my own, but I wound up lost. Now I'm making my way back to the foot of the cross. It's not a trophy for the winners. It's a shelter for the sinners. And it's right where I belong. Oh, it's more than an obligation. It's our foundation, the family of God. I know it's hard, but we need each other. We're sisters and brothers. Take me back. To the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to, the preach, to a preacher in a verse where they've seen me at my worst to the love I had at first. Oh, I want to go back. I want to go to church. You know, sometimes, and I'll just share just real quick. In, in this week's sermon, uh, Jason asked me if I, uh, I told him that I would like to write these two weeks of sermons. And, and quite honestly, it put me in a pinch. And I was like, oh gosh, I got to write this sermon. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. And I normally, even when I worked for the church full time, I would write my sermons on Mondays. And I had this Monday to do so, but I left for Washington, D.C. with my daughter on our eighth grade trip early at about, I had to wake up at like 2.30 in the morning. So I wanted to go to bed early, right? Still had to pack because I'm not a prepper. And I still had to pack, but I was like, oh, I got to get this sermon done. But then it, it dawned on me like, you know, a lot of times we look at things when we're right. You ever write out a research paper and you're like, I just need to fill it up with kind of bull, right? <laughs> like you're kind of, <laughs> Evan, Evan's in, in architecture, and he's like, oh yes, he's in landscape architecture, and he's, I saw him shaking his head really hard. 
So you write a research paper and like, you're like, I just got to fill up the pages. Well, I felt in that whenever I first wrote that out, like I was like, am I just filling up the pages? But then God said, no, this is what I want you to express. This is what I want you to teach and, and, and move upon. And so this is not one of those times where I feel that way. I feel like this is where we ask the question, why do we go to church or are we the church? I feel like this is where we really need to really hone in on, right? And this, this song says so much about that way of things, right? And it's about connection to our brothers and sisters with one another. You guys remember in this, um, uh, I hope Jason taught on this, you know, you're not doing, you're not giving me a whole lot of good feelings on this. Um, but do you remember the part in the sermon, or even if you don't remember the part in the sermon, but you can see how the relationship changed with Jesus prior to his death, prior to his ascension, prior to him ascending into heaven, he called, his, he called the people around him friends, right? He called them friends, and then whenever he died, he, the relationship changed. He didn't talk much about, I mean, he talked a lot about the father beforehand, but then he talked about them being his friends brothers go tell my brothers beforehand it was about friendship now the relationship has changed right relationship has changed now we're brothers and sisters the res- the resurrected jesus talked to mary magdalene about the fact that he is going to his father and then the beautiful part about it he says our father now that we've talked about that song for a lot, a, a, a lot and it may, a little bit about my childhood, right? Now we're going to get into the Word. You guys have your Bibles with you? You guys have your Bibles with you? Your Bible apps at least? Okay, there we go. Now we said Bible apps. You're like, oh, I got mine. I always got my phone with me. So we're going to be uh, in the book of Hebrews, so you can turn to Hebrews, but we're also going to be looking at Psalm 122. Um, now, if you know me very well, I love context because I grew up with no context in scripture. I grew up with a lot of like, hey, this is the scripture and this is how you take it word for word, right? But I didn't grow up with learning the context of what scripture actually meant. So I love context. So we're going to jump in and read in Hebrews uh, 10, 24 and 25. We're going to start out in 24. And let us, not, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good needs, not meeting, not giving up. <laughs> Gosh, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Do you hear that? Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Do you think we're in the habit habit of not going to church? You may think, oh, I came to get a fluff sermon today. No, you didn't. (laughs) You came to get preached on today. And it says, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, I say a lot as, as a pastor. I'm not one of those pastors that's going to call you up and say, why weren't you at church? But what my, but what my hope is, is in whenever I am preaching is that you are going to be spurred on and encouraged so much so that you say, I can't wait to go back to church on Sunday. Right? And it's not, it's not through me. It's not through, it's, I, I'm just the conduit. I'm just here to say, hey, what the, what the Father has put on me, what the Holy Spirit has given me to say, right? But it's my hope that you are encouraged so much so that, like, I couldn't wait for one, to get out of Washington, D.C., <laughs> and for two, to come to church today. And not because I'm in Selma, but I love to share the word. I love to share the word, and I love to preach what God has given me. And in this book, so in the book of Hebrews, there are many examples of those who have demonstrated faith all throughout history, right? And living by faith is far better than merely fulfilling, and what we have a habit of doing is fulfilling rituals and rules. Boom. Whoops. Yeah, I said it. We have this habit of fulfilling all the rituals and making sure we do all the rules of church, right? You guys are like, Pastor Jason doesn't yell at us. <laughs> but that's what we're in the habit of doing. We, we have this habit of literally fulfilling all the things first. But then we leave out the Holy Spirit. What are we doing, church? I'm not saying that that's so much compass, but it's, it's there. 
We have this habit of making sure, I'm gonna, I'm, this is where I'm going to speak a little bit. We have this habit of making sure we get in some worship songs, then we do offering, then we do a sermon, then we do another worship song, and then boom, church is done. Who made that rule? In the churches I grew up in, <laughs> we, we would have an opening song, then the, the service leader would get up, we would all come around for prayer, you would kneel at the altar, pray, then you would sing a few more songs, you'd take up offering, preacher would preach, we'd sing another song or two, and then we were done. Who made the rule? I don't see anywhere in my scripture that says that's the way we got to do it. You? Yeah, I don't either. But, and, and I'm not saying that what we're doing is wrong, but church, what we're doing is sometimes we are so worried about the lights, the, 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 like the theatrics of church, when we should be worrying about what the Holy Spirit wants, what the Father wants, and what Jesus Christ wants in our services. That was free, too. <laughs> of course, here's the thing. All this stuff, we have this, um, these amazing privileges in our walk, right? They're associated, associated with our new life in Christ. And in this passage, here's one of the things. We get to enjoy motivation from one another. Do you guys love coming to this place and being motivated, motivated by your friends, by your, like by your closest people? Do you love that? And I would hope that you don't mind being called out a little bit. Do you feel like I'm calling you out today? Oh, it got quiet. <laughs> They're like, oh, crap. Yep. Here's the thing. We get to enjoy this motivation from one another, and let us, not, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Spurring one another along means that we are stirring up one another. Now, stirring up in the context, like I said, I love context. I love reading how this makes sense. Why does this make sense, right? Now, in this context, what I've read and what I studied is this could mean good or bad. It, literally, the, the meaning of spurring means that it could be good or bad. But I want to be stirred up in a good way. This context means that we are stirred up in a good way. It literally says on toward love and good deeds, right? When we meet on a Sunday or any other day for that matter, maybe for life group, you guys are, are, am I part of a life group? Part of a Bible study? Yeah? I know some of you are like, are you, got, are you, are you doing the Bible study after church? No, I'm not. Pastor Jason is doing the Bible study after church. And here's the thing, like, in all that, we have this, uh, we have this opportunity to, like, be, and, and the other thing, too, is we could, do you guys get worried whenever I say the word accountability? Do you love that word? Everybody loves that word accountability? Don't bother me, good. That's what I like to hear, Rick. We've had the privilege, uh, like, every time we meet, in any meeting that we have, we have this opportunity to spur one another on, to motivate one another on toward love and good deeds. But instead, what we've done as the church is we have gotten in the habit of complaining. Do you know what we get in the habit of doing? Complaining about those lights are too bright. They didn't sing the songs I like. He didn't preach the way I like him to preach. We get in the habit of, because we're so worried about our way of church, that we forget when we walk through those doors on a, on a Sunday morning or on a Wednesday night or whatever it may be, we get, we get in this mindset of, what am I going to complain about today? Rather than, how is the Holy Spirit going to move me today? That's where we should be at. When we walk through these doors, can you imagine if our mindset was straight up just flip-flopped and we said, hey, let's go get on the floor, prostrate before the Lord, just like they used to do. What if we came in with a mindset of being here instead of there and worrying about what the Father is going to do in my life beforehand? Because we get, we get so caught up in this moment of, 
I need, I, need, I need to go talk to my friends. I need to go complain about something. Remember that, how I started the service out, that I'm on assignment? <laughs> I'm on assignment today, and here's the thing, is all this stuff in, in church looks so different to so many people. And I, I want to say this, and I know this is just a kind of a, a, a reiteration of last week, too, is that did you know that this is just a building so it's just a place where we meet. You are the church. You are the church. And, and here's the thing. We're just a small part of something so much bigger. Here's the, here's the really cool part in, in a lot of different things. I skipped way past where I was supposed to be at. All that stuff happens right we get motivation you know you know i had so many people talk to me after the after the storm and the aftermath of the storm like it literally happened did you and it, and it wasn't just at, at winchester it was it was across our whole camp like all three campuses everybody was stirring one another up like encouraging us i had so many people reach out to me man just keep going you're doing so great i had people that weren't even in this state saying adam keep up the good work it wasn't about getting glory for me it was about giving glory to the Father. All three organizations that came to the Winchester campus, they kept saying, well, we want Compass Church to be the hero. You know what I told them? I said, no, I do not want us to be the hero. You know why? Because God is the hero. I want nothing. I want Adam Sewell to not be looked at for glory. The Father just said, say yes. And I said, okay. I do not want the Compass Church to be the hero of anything I want glory to be given to the Father. Okay, so we literally get our help from the Lord, right? Literally. Here's the really cool part about, uh, about what happened in the whole storm is, is we showed up on Friday at the Winchester campus not knowing what in the world it was going to look like. I had no clue what, what the next few days or next week was going to look like. I had no clue. But then God showed up. And, and then what happened here is, I, I don't know, somebody knows the count of how many people were here helping that Saturday after the storm. Like 80? In between 60 and 80? Is that correct? I'm asking a question. Does anybody know? Between 60 and 80 people? That is how God puts us into movement. That's how God puts us into motion. And we may think a lot of times, what is it supposed to look like? It doesn't always look like how we think. It doesn't always look like how we think it's going to look like. Lots of times we think of why do we go to church? The evidence of why we go to church is what's taken place in the last month. That's the evidence of why we go to church. It's the evidence of what's taken place over the last three years within the Compass Church. Do you guys feel like we've been through a lot of stuff in the last three years? A lot of people are like, oh, we could preach over that for a while. The evidence is literally all over the place. It is all over the place. This is why we go to church. And church, I'm here to tell you right now that there must be something pretty darn important to the kingdom within our three campuses because the enemy keeps coming at us and you know what we keep coming back at him saying i got my shield you ain't you can't you cannot pierce us you cannot come at us anymore i have my armor you can't come at me and church i'm here to tell you we got to still stand strong we can't back down Who said that? Yes, sir, Isaac. Thank you. That's a sermon in itself. Never back down. That's so good. Moving on to verse 25. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, and I know we read this, but encouraging one another and, and all the more as you see the day approaching. To neglect Christian meetings is to give up on the encouragement and help of others. We gather together to share our faith and to strengthen one another in the Lord, right? 
And then as the day of his coming, what it's talking about is the day when Christ will return. Here's the thing. We're going to face a lot of struggles. Do you feel like we're facing struggles? Do you feel like even sometimes we're being persecuted? Here's the thing. This is going to be controversial, but I'm going to say it anyway, because I'm a controversial guy. If you don't know that, there are so many excuses for us to miss church, right? Lots, so many. But shouldn't church be the reason, the excuse that we miss the other things? There was like three people that said yes. All the others are like, well, I got something to do on Sundays. And here's the thing, like, you may, here's how this works. If that upsets you, if that phrase or that thought process upsets you, then maybe the Holy Spirit is giving a slight bit of conviction to you. Adam's not. Adam's just saying what the Holy Spirit said to say. But literally, this should be the reason we miss everything else. Do you know that if every person, I can't speak so much for Selma, but if every person that attends the Winchester campus came every Sunday, we would probably have a consistent 130 people in that church house every Sunday. But instead, we average between 70 and 90 all the time. I was really stoked. We had 138 people on Easter. Place was packed. Your, this place was packed. How many do we have on, here on Easter Sunday? 180-something. Your town had 182. Had, the places were packed. But here's the thing. We go to church because it's Easter Sunday, right? I guarantee you there's a 99.9% .9 chance that church that you attended on Easter Sunday is going to have church the following Sunday. Oops. Do you guys want a sermon today? Okay, moving on to Psalm 122, verse 1. Oops, there we go. Psalm 122, verse 1 says this, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Man, can you imagine if we rejoiced about going to the house of the Lord with one another? <laughs> what would that do to our, maybe our lifestyles? What would that do if we said, hey man, you should go to youth, you should go to, you should go to church with me on Sunday. You should feel honored that somebody invites you to church on Sunday. Because why? Because they care for your soul. They care for your soul. Here's, here's the cool part about this uh, scripture is David was in a state of worship in this psalm. He was in a state of worship through most of the psalms. Did you know that? And for some, it may seem like church is a chore. Do y'all feel that's the way sometimes? And here's why. You're thinking, what do you, what do you mean? Husbands, wives, some of you have a long drive to church. Anybody have a long drive to church? You ever get in an argument with your husband or your wife on the way to church? And then you walk up in church and you're acting all nicey nicey. <laughs> all the while we're gritting your teeth, like, oh my gosh. Oh. But what happens by the time church is over? Heart change. You forget about it. Yes. Forget about all the stuff. You know that scripture that talked about we must spur one another on toward good deeds, love and good deeds. When we come to church, I don't know that there's a way that I could stay mad at my wife. And here's the thing. It's not really mad. It's just that she is my helper when she's in the passenger seat. And I don't know how in the world I got around before I married Shauna. <laughs> she's going to watch this back and she's like, you jerk. <laughs> We've talked about this so much like, like, I'll pass somebody on a Sunday morning, and it's one of those things as a pastor, I almost feel like it's a bad thing to do on a Sunday morning, but when you're driving literally 52 miles an hour in a 55, 
get out of my way. <laughs> like, come on, get out of my way. There, there, we have a speed limit for a reason. Or, you guys will understand this, every single dude that's married to a woman will get this. Driving down the interstate, there's brake lights. Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? There's brake lights. They're stopping. No way. And I always say they're not stopping, they're slowing down. That's my, that's my return. But then I always give her a hard time, and I'm like, whenever I turn my turn signal on to get into the other lane, you know what she does? She looks in the mirror, too, and I'm like, do you not trust me? Like, I am a good driver. Do you not trust me? She's like, no, it's just habit. I'm like, babe, come on. We've been married going on 22 years. You know how I drive by now. But I say all that to say this, is that a lot of times, and, and I talked about church being a chore. Sometimes you go to church thinking, man, I could really use the sleep today. I just got back from a long trip. I, I, I was, you know, my kids have this thing or my whatever has this thing or it seems like it's just one more thing. But did you know, unless Pastor Adam's preaching, it's really only an hour and a half out of your day. It's really an hour and a half out of your day. So here's my thing. And I, I'm, not, I'm not even saying this, and this is really wild. I'm not even saying that you need to come to the Compass Church. Go to a, a church. Go to a church. Be in a body of believers so that you can be spurred on by somebody that gives you encouragement, that says, hey, I'm here to love on you. Hey, I'm here to give you a word, or you're there to give them a word. There's all kinds of stuff that we can really get all worked up about in church. Feels like it's a chore, right? 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 But I can tell you from the experiences that I talked about that when we're having a rough morning, being around others can extremely just flip the script on our day. It, ju it literally moves us from one place to another. I'm going to invite the worship team up. What can happen in these moments is it, it can be liberating. And did you know that it's so extraordinary in the fact that this is what happens when we come to a place that was literally meant for that to be liberating for us. Jesus went to the cross. He liberated us when he went to the cross and freed us from the grip of sin. Did you know this? I get it. Church is hard, right? Agree? Not agree? Agree? Sometimes? Yes, church is hard. Lots of people, have you ever heard somebody saying, I got church hurt? I hate that. Because you don't have church, you didn't get hurt by the church, you got hurt by someone. Do you ever hear anybody say, well, I got Walmart hurt? <laughs> Do you ever hear anybody say, I got Shell Station hurt? Do you ever hear anybody say, I got mall hurt? No, you didn't get hurt by the church, you got hurt by someone. It can be hard. And th th here's what really frustrates me. People stand behind their so-called Christianity and then they use it to hurt others. That isn't the Jesus I know. It's not the church I know. The Jesus I know, he came to love. You may be thinking, yeah, he came to love, but there are other things he came for also. He came to liberate. He came to set the captive free. He came to set us free from bondage. Do you know that we don't have to live in the, in the generational bondage that our parents lived in? Some of you may be thinking, man, I, 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 my parents went through it, so I, I might as well go through it too. No. No. We don't have to sit in that. We don't have to be in that. We don't have to live through the financial struggles that they live through. We don't have to live in the financial struggles that we live through. He has come to literally set us free from those things. He came to heal the sick. He came to make the lame walk. He came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. You may be thinking, 
yeah, he did, but that's in heaven. No, he didn't say, I'm waiting till you get to heaven. He said, here's the thing, friends. He says this, that I have came so that you may have life and have it abundantly here on earth. On earth. Yeah, we're going to have a really abundant life when we get to heaven, but I don't want to wait till I get to heaven. I want, I want those things now. I want an abundant life here. And here's the thing. I want to go to church. I want to go to church where there is freedom. I want to go to a place where we can pray for one another at this altar. I want to go to a place where if somebody takes a running spell, man, nobody looks at them weird. <laughs> guys ever seen that before? I want to go to a church where there is Holy Spirit filled preaching. Amen. And church, I believe that there is no greater time than this, <laughs> that we stand up for what God is telling us and what God is calling us to. Amen? Take me back to a place that feels like home. Take me back to people I can depend on. Take me back. Let's worship. There was a time I swore I could never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running. Searching, but every place I turn for healing left me more broken than the last. Take, Take me, me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a first. this, but uh, I, as I was writing this sermon on Monday, I sent April and, and uh, Isaac, I said, hey, can we do this song this week? They had already had it all picked out of what they were doing. So the fact that they learned this song that quickly from Monday till now is quite impressive. So there's purpose in this song, right? 
And I believe that person is, or that purpose is to get all the other stuff out of the way, right? There's so many things that get in our way as we go through life, right? We need to get the world out of the way so that we can focus on the one who gave us life. When I first heard this song, I had this thought of like my old time religion days, right? Remember, mom and dad took us to church, would fall asleep in the pews. There was something sweet about that time, right? And the reason we fell asleep is because the pews were so dang hard to sit on because they were made out of cedar that laying down felt better. I have one of those cedar pews sitting on my front porch from a church that my mom grew up in. And we sat there, and a lot of times whenever I sat on that pew on my porch, I think about all the times and all the, all the things of, you know, that took, and it takes me back to that place. It takes me back to those sweet times where I got to hear my, hear my dad preach. Dad was a fire and brimstone type preacher. I got to hear the southern gospel songs, and it just, it brings some amazing heritage to thought. And used to, I used to couldn't stand contemporary music. It's like really hard for me to get over my heritage and what I knew of. But the thing is, is that I just want to be in church. I just want to be in a place where I can be with a community of believers. Like I get excited about what the next Sunday holds. Do y'all get that way? Get excited about what next Sunday holds, but it shouldn't just be about a Sunday. I should be about excited about what tomorrow holds. Who am I going to get to talk to about what my Savior did for me? Who am I going to get to share the good news with, not just next Sunday? Because Sunday is always here, right? We, we know we're always coming to church, right? But did you know you're the church? Why don't you take the church to someone? There's this thing about taking us back. I could get really excited about going back to those times, right? Going back to those times where we sat in those pews, those hard cedar pews. But I realized in this is what really needs to happen is that I, I need to be taken back to my first love. Do you know that when in Revelation, when, it taught, when, when, they're, talk, when they're talking about all the churches... And he says that you have forgotten your first love. I believe that what this means is this means that I need to be taken back to why I first loved Jesus. Right? Take me back to a place where there are people who genuinely care for me and my family. People who genuinely care for you and your family. A place where there is love so deep that it doesn't matter if you look like me or not. You're welcome here. I've heard so many times in all three of our campuses that when people walk into these buildings, they have that people, newer people who come, they say these words, I've never felt so welcome at a church. Maybe thinking it's weird to see a pastor preaching in shorts. But you know why I do that? It's not because I, I want to put on a show or anything like that. That's not, not for me. Because when somebody walks through those doors, and, and this is just my thought, and it may be wrong, but when somebody walks through those doors and they see a pastor all dressed up in a three-piece suit, and they can't afford a three-piece suit, you know what that says to me is, man, this is a stuffy church. I don't want to be a stuffy church. I want to be a place where if, if you're struggling, if you're hurting, or if you're weeping, or if whatever you're going through, I want you to come in here. And I want you to be able to be prayed for. I want you to be able to be loved on because that's who we are as a church. Doesn't matter what you look like. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you smell like. Right? Yeah. May have not had a shower in three weeks. There's people that walked into, into Winchester. They literally had, had no place to shower. I didn't care. Right. I don't care. 
I want, I want to be here to wrap my arms around you and say, you know what? God loves you. And we're here for you. Amen? Yes. I love you all. Have a wonderful week. Go to church. <laughs>